Okay, so now we're going to learn to use the UV spectrometer. The first thing we need to do is prepare our samples. To do that, we take some of our material that we've prepared and we place it into a cuvette. Never transfer directly from a volumetric flask, always transfer it into a beaker or another container first, so as not to contaminate the source material. Now let's take a quick look at that cuvette. The very upper part of the cuvette is frosted and there's a notch marked, a V-shape, which should always be along the beam path. You'll also see that one side is frosted and the other side is very clear. The beam goes through the clear sides, so we should never handle the cuvette by those sides. You should only handle it by the frosted sides. Now let's look at the spectrometer. The first thing we're going to do with the spectrometer is set up the method that we wish to use. We want to do photometry at a single wavelength, so we set the first option and then the first option again, and we're doing single wavelength measurements. Then what we need to do is choose the wavelength that we want to measure at at 650 nanometers, so we put that in by saying go to wavelength, 650, enter. We'll come back to why we're going to use 650 nanometers later. In the meantime, let's get on with setting up the machine. The first thing we need to do is run a blank. So we take a cuvette with deionized water in it and we put it into the machine. Again, you can see one side is frosted and one side is clear. The frosted side must go left to right as we look at it now. If we take a quick look internally, we can see what that looks like. We can see the clear face through the window along which the beam travels, which makes sense. And this is what the view from straight above will look like. Notice that the V is on the same side as the clear face, is facing left to right from our perspective. So we push auto zero and we wait a few seconds for the machine to zero itself. Once it zeroes itself, you'll notice that the absorbance reads at 0, 0.000. Now we're ready to start making measurements. Notice how when we open the machine, the absorbance changes. So it's important to have the machine closed so that there's no stray light making it onto the sensor, altering our reading. Now we just take our samples in order, place them into the machine, making sure to have the clear face pointing in the right direction, and then we push make measurement, or in this case, start stop. The machine will store the readings one at a time, and you'll see as I speed it up here, we can make all our readings, and then we're gonna write those down. Once we've got all our measurements made, we can take those and place them into a standard curve, and then the last two samples, which are the unknowns, we can calculate the concentrations that they are at using our standard curve and the equation of our best fit line. So, now back to the question of how did we pick 650 nanometers? Well, what we're looking at here is a view along the beam path through the cuvette. And instead of choosing one wavelength, we're going from 800 nanometers, which as we know from physics is red, all the way up to 300 nanometers, which we know is into the ultraviolet. And we can see in this clear uh, vial that all of the colors are absorbed equally well or equally poorly and they can all be detected by the camera. Now if we take a selection of different colors and we run the same experiment we can see why we might choose red or 650 nanometers for our blue. So here we are starting the experiment and we can see that the red light is much less visible through the blue and it is a very pale blue solution than in the other three colors purple, yellow and red. And we can see as the experiment progresses, as we go through the spectrum, we move into yellow, and they all absorb poorly in the yellow region. But once we get through yellow, something interesting starts to happen. We can see why the different materials appear different colors, because they only let selected wavelengths get to our eyes. So if something appears blue, it's because it only lets the blue light shine through, and it's going to absorb all the red light. If something appears purple, it doesn't let any of the green light through, it only lets blue, purple, and red through. If we look at yellow now, we can see that yellow doesn't let blue light through and it doesn't let any purple light through. And so only the yellow and some of the red makes it through to our eyes. It's pretty hard to follow all that, so I've put that on again and we can watch it much more slowly. You can see each of the colors appear and disappear depending on what the color of the solution is compared to what wavelength is being shone through the mixture. But it does make sense why we would use red light to measure the amount of copper sulfate or blue appearing material in a solution. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope it was helpful. Again, if you have any questions, ask your lecturer, post them up on Moodle, or I'll see you in the labs. See you soon, bye.
Remember, feel free to check out any of my other videos. They'll appear on the left and right. If you're doing this through the Moodle page, remember you've got to click on the link in Moodle in order for it to be registered as a view there. So while you can follow the links here, you, if you're doing an assignment, click on it through the link on the Moodle page. Anyway, hope that helps. Again, any questions, comments, post on Moodle or ask me in the lab. Bye.